Welcome to another Monday Morning Pastor, where we look at a point or two from yesterday's sermon to help us get through the week. And today we are going to talk about fact checkers. We know what fact checkers are. There are these websites like Snopes and PolitiFact and FactCheck.org that examine the truthfulness of public statements, usually by politicians. One of them, I think it's the Washington Post, actually has a ranking system using Pinocchios, one to four Pinocchios to evaluate the truthfulness or not of statements made by people. Our main takeaway is that pastors and preachers should have friendly fact checkers in their own churches just to keep their message accountable and clear. And we find that even the Apostle Paul, that great theologian, church planner, and missionary, welcome and had fact checkers. We find that in the book of Acts, chapter 17, if you'll turn there with me. The background to our passage is this. Paul had just left a city called Thessalonica where he had started a movement of Christians. He moved some 45 miles down the road to a place called Berea. And we pick up that story in verse 11 of chapter 17 of Acts. The author of the story is Luke and this is what he says. Now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica. Uh, Luke is comparing these two cities, these two churches, and one of them is more noble. Why are they more noble? It says in verse 11, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Fact checkers, they were checking to see if what Paul said was consistent with, at that time would be the Old Testament scriptures. I think there's great application for us today, especially those of us that are in a teaching or preaching ministry, is that we should have people willing to check our facts. In my church, I always, on a regular basis, ask my leadership team, my leadership board, to always feel like they have an open door to talk to me about anything I might say on a Sunday morning in a message, if it's not clear, if it sounds funny to them. I mean, oftentimes we, we might misspeak or something like that. And they do. I also have a brilliant young person in our church, young man, who actually sends me the notes that he writes of my sermons. He'll take notes, write things down that he, his takeaways from the message. I love reading them because it's interesting to me to hear what other people hear uh, in comparison to what I think I said. These are really helpful things to a church, to pastors, and to the congregation. So pastor, if you're a pastor, you need to have fact checkers, people willing to listen carefully to what you've said and be willing to talk to you. And if you are part of a church, and if ever the person up front says something that doesn't sound quite right to you, it's perfectly okay to approach them graciously, thoughtfully, tentatively, you might say something like this. You know, pastor, on Sunday I heard you say such and such. It sounded like you met such and such. Is that what you meant? Can you explain that to me? And so often those types of things are just misunderstandings or people misspeak, but it's perfectly okay to fact check your pastor. One more takeaway from our passage, you need to, and I need to be deep in the word of God in scripture. You notice that this church studied the scriptures, how often? Daily. And so yesterday I challenged our church, our membership to make the decision yesterday that they would read the Bible at least five minutes a day, whether just reading or studying or meditating or thinking about it, but to be in the scriptures at least daily. And I was very pleased to see that most of the church said, we'll do that. So I wanna challenge you to do that as well, is take the scriptures, know the scriptures, and be in the word of God every day. Thank you for watching.